right guys I'm back and this is a warning that the Lord actually put on my heart to share with the body of Christ so let's talk about it we are living in a time where witchcraft like I said in the previous video it is running rampant but it's also running rampant in the church because people are so looking for signs and miracles that they will even disregard scripture in order to receive a word. This is why it's critical that you know the scripture for yourself, that you are a student of the word, but you also have a personal relationship. And above all those things, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is gonna preserve and seal you. The Holy Spirit is who tells you and leads you to all truth and warns you. You know, um, a lot of times we get that little just that little voice in our spirit that says something isn't right about a particular individual, organization, situation, whatever it might be, and we can ignore it. We can fight and battle with ourselves, but we end up having no peace about it. If you continue to just not have any peace about it, you know, there's something to it. So I want to talk to you about the warning that the Lord gave me because Matthew 24, 24 says this, that in the last days that false messiahs, false Christ, false prophets, they're going to arise and they're going to arise in such a powerful way because they're going to be doing signs, miracles and wonders like never before. So much so that if it were possible that even the very elect could be deceived if it were possible. So let's talk about it. You know, a lot of times we see and we hear about churches where it was a cult and they end up like, what was the Jim Jones era where all of those people lost their lives. They drank the Kool-Aid, right? Um, I forget about the one in Waco, Texas, where all of those people, these were believers who were, you know, seemingly sold out for Christ, but they put their trust in a man instead of keeping their trust in God. You have got to always keep your hope in the word, your trust in the word, your faith in the word, anchored in the word. So when they come telling you something differently, when they come bringing you a different gospel, and here's the thing, some of them are very crafty, you all. If you do not know the word for yourself, you will miss it because they have such deep revelation, right? So much deeper than what the scriptures so-called offer, and they add to the scriptures, but it's like, well, God gave you that personal revelation, but there's nowhere it is in the Bible that I can receive or pick up or even discern even where you got that from. So you're so deep, but you're going past the word of God. No, the word of our of God is our anchor. Don't let anyone deceive you of that because the Bible says, even if an angel of light comes to you and tells you something different than what you have learned in this gospel, what is in this word? then let them be accursed. So this is something you've got to understand because the enemy is so crafty and sly that he can come in. He knows the scripture very well. And all he has to do is take a little leaven, you know, just a little leaven and it ruins everything. So we have to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. And we have got to really, really, really be walking closely with the Lord and studying the scriptures and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us so that we are not deceived in these last days because you wonder, how did it happen? Why did these people drink the Kool-Aid? Why did these people follow after that man so closely? Did they not realize they were in a cult? But they didn't because, listen, you all, the brainwashing happened slowly. They began to see these people as the Messiah. They begin to see them as a God. It's idolatry because they get so wrapped up in this man or woman of God. And they're like, oh my gosh, they're so revelatory. They have it. They just, ooh, and they become obsessed. And they believe that they have some secret revelation that is outside of the word of God. But it's very subtle. So I want to warn you, God has sent me here today and he brought it back to my heart because I'll be honest, I almost forgot, but he brought it right back to my spirit. The witchcraft that is happening in the church is so subtle, y'all. It's a lot of spiritism. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Listen to your inner voice. If you do not have peace about it, you don't have to condemn because, you know, sometimes we are like, I don't know what that is. 
don't condemn it. Just let it alone. If you don't have any peace and you've prayed over about it, pray over and over and you don't have you release it. And you can even pray for those people for you too, that, that, that they don't go astray, that they do the call of the Lord. And if they have gone astray, that the Lord would lead them back to the narrow path. But it's better for you to walk away from something than to continue on when you and ignore the voice that's within inside of you. Okay? Don't ignore the Holy Spirit. And so I'm reminded by the false prophet. Well, he wasn't even a false prophet. I'm sorry, the old prophet, the story of the old prophet versus the young prophet. The young prophet was full of the Holy Ghost. Let's just say he was on a mission for the Lord. He went to the king. The Lord gave him an instruction. He said, listen, when you go into the country, you're not to eat or drink. I don't even want you to go the same way. But on his way back, he fulfilled the mission. He did exactly what he was supposed to when the king offered him gifts, drinks, whatever. He said, I cannot receive anything from you. I'm just here to do the work of the Lord. I've got to go back my way. But he stopped and rest. And in that stopping to rest, it gave way for the enemy to come in and he used a fellow believer, believe it or not. This was a man that was a prophet himself, but at some point in his journey, he was disobedient. Okay. And so he goes after this young prophet and he wants so badly to connect with him. He's heard about the great things that he's just done and the miracle. And he's like, where did he go? And they were like, well, you know, we heard that he just stopped on his journey under a tree. Maybe you can catch him. So he runs out to go find this new prophet. And sure enough, you all, he was resting under the tree. And sometimes we have to be so clear when God gives us an instruction, it's not a time to rest, but it's a time to continue in the assignment and finish it and complete it. Because if you stop, you just might get distracted. And what happens? This old prophet comes and he tries to get him to have dinner. It doesn't seem anything wrong with that. Hey, come have dinner with me. But what was wrong with it is that God had given him specific instructions not to eat nor drink or even go the same way. And so when he tells, no, no, God has specifically told me I'm not to do that. This old prophet didn't honor the word of the Lord. In fact, he lied. He said, well, an angel told me that it's okay. And see, we have to be careful because there's so many people that say, well, an angel told me this. An angel gave me this word for you. And they pervert the gospel. Listen, yes, there are angels. Yes, they communicate, but they will never go against the word of God. And I need you to catch this in the spirit. They will never understand me. Come here. They will never go against the word of God. So it's so imperative that you know that word inside and out and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So you don't get distracted or you don't get dis, um, overly impressed or amazed because some man or woman of God comes to you and says an angel told them something. If it goes against what the word of the Lord has told you and it's in the scriptures, You've got to, what did the Lord say? Let him be accursed. Okay. But this young man, he was still not even some ways, maybe even immature spiritually, or maybe just, you know what? It just caught him off aware, off guard. Here, this seemingly person, this seemingly good person, a believer, he's a prophet too. He's trying to connect with this young prophet saying, Hey, I'm a prophet too. Not everybody is who they say that they are. Some people just want a little bit of your shine. They just want to be in your, your uh, company. And it wasn't that he was such, such a bad person, but he was misguided. He was a liar. And he calls this young prophet his life. Because he went and had dinner with the old prophet. And on his way, there was a lion waiting for him. Now, how many of you know that lion was not the lion that roars around the fake lion? That was, I believe, that was the lion of Judah. You crossed God. You disobeyed him. And there was a consequence and he lost his life, you all. Now the prophet comes, he hears about what happens to this young prophet and now he feels bad. 
so bad that he says, when I die, bury my bones with his. But what you did cost this young man his life. But here's the truth about it, you all. He disobeyed the instructions of the Lord. And when we too disobey the instructions of the Lord and we put a man higher than God's word, well, we got, we're in trouble with God, right? So I'm warning you, be very careful because what I'm seeing, the witchcraft is so subtle and so many people are giving man so much high honor and notoriety. They're making them idols. They're putting man above God's word because they're so deep. Nobody's deeper than the word of God. Remember that. All right, guys, the next time I will see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this video. I believe that it'll help many. There's a lot of people that are being deceived. And I hate to say it, but I hope we don't have another Jim Jones type of episode. But I'm here to warn.